good evening to you and welcome to News 360. The bulletin comes to you live from the News Hub here at Adisawe Kanda. I'm Natalie Fort. My name is Alfred Okansi. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. We haven't learned anything. Neither has it even pricked our senses. What happened to Major Maxwell Mahama is still being perpetrated. It's still happening. Father of late Major Maxwell Mahama disappointed, Ghanaians have not learned any lessons from the tragic death of his son. The National Peace Council tax NPP and NDC to make significant inputs into the vigilantism and related offences bail. Also ahead this evening, lawyers for NDC National Chairman Samuel Ofosu Ampofo file applications seeking to have the Accra High Court strike out two counts of assault charges leveled against him. And in business tonight, the Bank of Ghana maintains policy rate at 16%. On the international front this evening, Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz and his government lose no, no confidence votes in special parliamentary session. Stay with us here on News 360 for the details of these stories and much more news. As always, our bulletin is live all across the world on our website. It's 3news.com as well as on Facebook, TV3 Ghana and on DSTV Channel 279. Let's get started with our very first story this evening. As father of the late Major Maxwell Mahama, Captain Retired Dennis Mahama, has expressed disappointments, Ghanaians have not learned any lessons from the tragic death of his son. He made the observation two years after the late soldier was allegedly mistaken for an armed robber and lynched while on duty at Dentro Obwase in the central region. Here's reports by Thomas Adote Papo. Ghana. Where is your love? Where is your love? The death of his son was a bolt from the blue. Ghanaians were equally shocked and traumatized by the news. My mission was simple but difficult to find out how he has spent the last two years without his confidant, Major Maxwell Mahama. And when we sat down for the interview, he could not hold back his tears. The last time he heard from his son was when he called him on phone to oversee a two-bedroom house he was constructing. And that's all. That ended it. Up to today, I haven't heard of my, from my son again. I've never stopped crying it because it, it, just, it just keeps happening or his memories, a lot of discussions we've had, a lot of plans we've put together. And trial closure is yet to be brought to the ongoing trial of persons accused to have been involved in lynching his son. Captain Mahama is a bit about the justice system but is appointed about the number of persons standing trial. Other people were involved in going to fetch kerosene or petrol, and others were involved in, others were on their body. This is what we are told in court. They were on their body. Lighting, fire, and all those things. Where are they? We have only 14 people standing. That is the only certain. I would be very glad to see at least 150 people well identified as those who contributed and took part in the killing of this innocent soul. He was blunt. Ghanaians had not learned from the tragic death of a son. We haven't learned anything. Neither has it even pricked our senses. What happened to Major Maxwell Mahama is still being perpetrated. It's still happening. Innocent lives are still being claimed by a mob action. That notwithstanding, he is hopeful the Say No to Mob Injustice Foundation set up will drive home the agenda. 
14 persons, including the Assemblyman for Dentra Obwasi, William Barr, are standing trial at an Accra High Court over the killing of Major Maxwell Mahama, who was an officer of the 5th Infantry Battalion at Burma Camp. The late soldier was on duty at Dentra Obwasi in the central region when on May 29, 2017, some residents allegedly mistook him for an armed robber and lynched him. The mob had ignored his persistent plea that he was an officer of the Ghana Armed Forces. Oh, and may his soul continue to rest in perfect peace. Now, the National Peace Council has taxed the two major political parties, the NPP and the NDC, to make significant inputs into the vigilantism-related offences bill or risk losing public confidence. Chairman of the Peace Council, uh, Professor Emmanuel Asante, was speaking at the official opening of a stakeholders' meeting on vigilantism at the Pediasse Lossier in the Eastern Region. Programs officer for CDD, Nana Abram Pamensa, was speaking at the ongoing dialogue of vigilantism. He said in 2017, findings by CDD indicated that 13% of Ghanaians believed government has not done much in addressing vigilantism. It again showed that 40% of the view government has done fairly well and needs regulation to deal with the problem. The research revealed that 53% of Ghanaians were the view that government had failed to address the issues of vigilantism. The program's officer of CDD, Nana Abram Pamensa, proposed a national security dialogue to address the problem. The same group of people, they don't operate in specific geographical area. You can find them in Tetiman today. You go and meet them at Talesi when there's an engagement. You go and meet the same people when there's an engagement in Accra. It also happened that that same group of people can rent their services to chief tenancy when there's chief tenancy conflicts. They can find guards when they, there's profit in line guardism. And they can also come to politics when there's profit there. So they are there. They form themselves, they train themselves, and they are ready to sell their service. To further address the menace, the Deputy Inspector General of Police, James Opombuenu, noted the new vigilantism offenses bill could assist them. He, however, asked political parties to desist from attacking the integrity of the Ghana Police Service. If a police officer does something and you are criticizing him, you know how to say it. We don't say that because you are seeing one policeman collecting one city on the road, the whole Ghana Police Service is rotten. You go and sit on the radio and you say that. You are telling somebody who is not as enlightened as you are that you should not trust the police. And therefore, when somebody slaps him next time, you should take a cutlass and... Uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, him. So let us all work together and make sure that we are able to maintain the, or retain the confidence that the state institutions have. Well, rather, let me say that uh, what you just watched, the story, uh, a study actually conducted by the Center for Democratic Governance, uh, CDD, in uh, 2017, having revealed that 53% of Ghanaians uh, of the view government has failed in addressing issues on vigilantism. Natalie, you want to get us the details of what the National Peace Council has been saying? Absolutely, Alfred. So let's stay on this issue as the National Peace Council has tasked the two major political parties, the MPP and the NDC, to make significant inputs into the vigilantism related offences bill or risk losing public confidence. Chairman of the Council, Professor Emmanuel Asante, was speaking at the official opening of a stakeholders meeting on vigilantism at Pejase in the Eastern Region. This is the third time the National Peace Council is meeting with the two major political parties, the MPP and the NDC, and other key stakeholders to discuss and dialogue on the new vigilantism-related offenses bill to address the problem. Chairman of the National Peace Council, Professor Emmanuel Asante, expressed concern about vigilantism, which he said is creating political attention. Describing it as a security threat, he blamed political parties for failing to address the menace and urged them to conduct themselves by making judicious use of state resources. Indeed, the current leadership of the NPP and the NDC and all Ghanaians have a unique opportunity to assure our forebears who laid their lives for Ghana and are resting now 
that we are committed to upholding the unity and the peace they bequeath to us and to inform the present and the future generations are resolved not only to sustaining the peace of the country, but to reaffirm in our democracy the value of humanity and peaceful coexistence despite our differences. A member of the Peace Council, Dr. SKB Asante, is confident the vigilantism-related bill will create a code of ethics for all political parties. Actively designed code of conduct providing guidance on ethical conduct with a corresponding framework to monitor and evaluate compliance, we would have achieved a major outcome. This achievement lies within the exclusive competence of stakeholders, especially the NDC and the NPP. Let the legal team for the national chairman of the NDC, Samuel Ofosuampofo, have filed an application seeking to have the Accra High Court strike out two counts of assault charges leveled against him. That's Samuel Ofosuampofo, lead counsel, Tonelita, uh, intimated to the court of the necessity to make a determination on the application before the continuation of the trial of his client. Samuel of Usompofo and Kweku Bohin, a deputy national communications officer of the party, were dragged to the courts by the attorney general for allegedly inciting NDC party communicators to rain verbal insult and also incite violence against the chairpersons of the Electoral Commission and the National Peace Council. With one surety after they pleaded not guilty to the charges of conspiracy to cause harm and assault on a public officer, lawyers for Kweku Bohin have raised an alibi that he was not at the said meeting where the attorney general claims the comments inciting the party communicators were made. At Monday's hearing, counsel for Kwekubwain, Dr. Abdul Basid Bamba, also filed an application urging the court to order prosecution to make available the diary of acting relating to the case. Director of Public Prosecutions, Ivona Takra Obobisa, opposed the two applications and said the state had concluded investigations on the whereabouts of Kweku Bohin during the said meeting where the comments were made. According to her, the prosecution had filed the investigative report at the court's registry and the report will speak for itself. Hearing continues on June 7 at the court presided over by Justice Samuel Asiedu for the defense lawyers to move their applications. Let's turn to some other stories this evening. As three years ago, TV3 brought you the inspiring story of Matilda Abenega, who defied the odds to write the basic education certificate examinations. Matilda has made progress once again by partaking in this year's West Africa Senior School Certificate Examinations. Unfortunately, a software has still not been developed to enable her answer complex exam questions, especially in mathematics. Portia Gabo has the rest of the story. Matilda Agbanyaga has had an amazing journey despite living with cerebral palsy, a condition that affects muscle tone, movement and motor skills. When we first met Matilda, she was a candidate writing the 2016 basic education certificate exams at the Medina Islamic Center. Because of her condition, Wayek granted her the permission to use a laptop to write the exams. Matilda, how was the paper? It was a bit difficult. Because of uh, her condition, she couldn't write mathematics. Because there is no any software that can help her identify the diagrams and then symbols that can help her work out all the other things. After BECE, TV3 followed up at Wayek, who assured they would work on providing a solution to enable students with special needs write exams with ease. Well, anything that the council can do to support special needs candidates will do that. So I think we'll take, we'll, we'll, we'll take that into consideration and see what we can do, which will not benefit only her, but with other candidates in the future who have such needs. The Ghana Education Service promised to do the same. Matilda's case, she was not able to do part some of the mathematics mm. topics. So our division has also laced with the special coordinator and then other 
stakeholders to deal with it to deal with it to get a specific and a special software for her after the BEC, TV3 followed up at the Computerized School Selection and Placement System and Matilda gained admission to the West Africa Senior High School. Three years on, Matilda has once again made inroads. She's partaken in the 2019 WASI, but with some challenges. Today, she's writing Core Maths Paper 2. This paper involves calculation. Unfortunately, Matilda cannot hold a pen due to her condition. After two hours, 30 minutes, Matilda is disappointed. She cannot write the paper. Matilda, how was the paper? It was okay, but me, because of the Uber, did not provide me with the net. That's a tree soft to buy. So it was a bit difficult for me. So I wasn't able to do it. I think can eh, because you need to illustrate a Venn diagram. That's why I could not able to do it. During the BEC, we spoke with education service. They told us that to give us a, an IT specialist who will help her to who will help her install the a software in her computer. But up to now, nothing has been done. I'm disappointed in education service because a whole education service in this modern technology days that we speak about, there's no mechanism for physically child challenge people like this. So if they talk about all inclusive and they don't do anything about it, then their talking is not materialized or their talking is not useful. It's the same challenge she faced at the JHS level, the same challenge she's facing. We did everything to change it, but it couldn't change. Despite the setback, Matilda is grateful to have completed senior high school and she's hopeful of a brighter future. I hope to be a dead tertiary level to further my education and move ahead in life. So what do you want to be in the future? Actually, I wanted to be a medical doctor, but because of the necessary equipment and the subject, it was a bit difficult to attend to read psychology. It is unclear if there will be a special provision for students with special needs like Matilda, who wrote this year's WASI, but are unable to answer paper too. Matilda is throwing the challenge to Wayek and other individuals to help develop a software to enable students with special needs write mathematics with ease. Matilda is hopeful of passing exams to enable her dream of becoming a psychologist become a reality. Way back, there was no hope. For me and now, through education, I always hope so I am very happy. Poshigabo, TV3 News, Accra. Well, what, what we can assure you is that we'll keep knocking on the doors of the Special Education Unit of the Ghana Education Service to get some answers for this. We've been trying to get them to speak, but it's been one explanation or the other. And this is what Matilda has had to go through as a result of the absence of the software to help her. But we're not stopping at this. Stay with us in a subsequent bulletin. We'll get some answers and help Matilda out through to the end. On MTA Video Report tonight, our citizen journalist Husseini Abdul uh, Sumed highlights the plight of residents in accessing potable water despite huge volumes going waste at Sevalugu in the northern region. The water situation in Savalugu has been a matter of discussion. This is one of the biggest channel of reserves that we get a chunk of water from. When they open it, chunk of the water supply to our community would go on drainage. This has been there for some time. 
the right and appropriate authorities come to our aid to help control the situation so that we get this water that has been put into waste into good use. These tanks are there waiting for water, but the water is running on the ground. Anytime they, is, they open the water, this is the situation. Well, you can also send us your video report via WhatsApp number 055 Yes, do stay with us here on News 360. We've got the latest from the world of business coming up shortly. Welcome back to News 360. Let's delve into the business segment this evening, starting off with the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana, which has maintained the policy rate at 16% for the second time this year. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, who made it known, attributed it to threats posed by energy-related debt and weak inflation outlook triggered by the exchange rate volatility. April's inflation rose to 9.5%, the third time since the beginning of the year that consumer prices had gone up. This, the governor explains, must be checked. Implementation of the budget in the year to April 2019 shows continued challenges with revenue mobilization alongside increased pace of spending, which poses some risks to the fiscal outlook. Expenditure pressures have been exacerbated by payments associated with the energy sector. <clears throat> These are exerting financing pressures on government, and more stepped-up efforts will be required to ensure total realignment of expenditures to revenue. He says on the domestic front, economic growth remains steady and is projected to gain some additional momentum supported by crude oil production. In the outlook, the trade balance is expected to record surpluses bolstered by the oil sector and a pickup in private transfers to support an improving current account balance. However, there are also significant outflows associated with energy-related debt bond maturities and coupon payments, which would have to be managed over the rest of the year. The committee observed strong external sector developments in the first quarter emanating from a strong trade surplus outen and improved inflows into the capital and financial account. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has given a firm assurance that it will in a few weeks commence the process of cleaning up the four other categories of the financial sector. The governor noted that the central bank has so far received a little over 900 million CDs to tackle the cleaning up of the microfinance sector. There are 38 savings and loans companies, 22 finance houses, 144 rural and community banks, and 484 microfinance institutions currently operating in the country. According to the governor of the Bank of Ghana, 7 billion cities is required for the cleanup of the savings and loans and finance house, an amount yet to be released. As you know, the total bill, if you put both of them together, is closer to 7 billion. So the budgetary resources are not there to undertake an operation of the magnitude of seven billion. We have just a billion. We can take care of the microfinance institutions. And we need to make an assessment of whether all the noise that we are getting from, you know, institutions like First Allied, that everybody knows is in the deep trouble, scattered all over the country. But it's not a microfinance. So the problem would not have been resolved by just concentrating on the microfinance part of it. Reacting to the issue, banking consultant Sanu Tui Champon says the assurance from the governor is good signal. The statement he made should be a soothing statement because the anxiety that people had that it's never going to be done now is arresting uh, those anxieties that it is going to be done. It's a question of time, and that time is not too far off. 
Let's turn from the financial sector now as Darling hair products have been relaunched in Ghana. The Darling brand seeks to empower women with their new products. Darling, as part of its growth strategy in Ghana, relaunched their brand with the introduction of various range of products. Darling revamped itself with a new brand look, new hairstyles, superior product benefits and richer colors. The brand, which has been in Ghana for over 15 years, is known to stand for fashion and transformation of the African woman through quality hair extensions. The relaunch will see Darling change its packaging and add new portfolio to its range of products that include braids, weaves, wigs and crochet as it seeks to increase its footprint in the country. Marketing managers for Darling Hair Ghana and Nigeria said women can rely on Darling for products to look great. The main purpose of this relaunch was not only to change the product packaging as we all see in the market, it was to reiterate our commitment as a business to putting the Ghanaian woman at the center of our style engine. We want to assure our wonderful customers that the change in packaging and styles is to help put Darling further on the globe the Ghanaian woman should be able to, after this relaunch, think that Darling is my go-to brand for any style of hair extension. We unveiled our new television ad, we unveiled our new logos, and several other new styles that we worked on to show the African woman that you know, Darling is here to partner with me and can give you amazing products. Darling Hair has exceptional choices of hairstyles for women. As part of the relaunch, they amazed the audience with beautiful hairstyles. To reflect their desire to always help women transition easily between a number of on-trend looks, Darling is saying to consumers, find your beautiful. Well, on that note, we wrap up the business segment here on News 360 this evening. Do visit our website. It's 3news.com for a lot more business stories. Over to you, Alfred. Natalie, thank you. With business, the president of Austria, His Excellency Alexander Van Belen, has described Ghana as the most important destination in Africa currently for Austria and Austrian businesses. According to President Alexander Van Belen, management of the Ghanaian economy, especially over the last two years, for which Ghana is projected to be the fastest growing economy in the world in 2019, has made the country very attractive for investors from Austria. The Austrian president made the observation after a closed-door bilateral discussion with President Ekufado. President Ekufado is in Austria to attend the R20 Austrian World Summit, an initiative which is helping regions, countries and cities to implement the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and to meet the global climate protection targets outlined in the Paris Agreement. Welcoming the increasing participation of Austrian businesses in Ghana's economy, President Ikufaro urged Austrian firms to invest in clean energy initiatives in Ghana. He assured his Austrian counterpart of Ghana's preparedness to tackle the climate change phenomenon. President Ikufaro is attending the summit in his capacity as co-chair of the UN Secretary General's group of eminent advocates on the 2030 SDGs and will participate in a high-level panel discussion on the need for leadership to take responsibility in the global process on sustainable development and international cooperation. Whilst in Austria, the president will also hold bilateral talks with Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz, with the President of Hungary, His Excellency Junos Elda, and with the CEO of the World Bank, Kristalina Georgieva. So live here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Stay with us. All right, so it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Quadrado. Now we're starting off from the group known as Prior Celebrated Music Duo and Afrobeat Group Prior. Keche actually have unveiled the video to their latest single or door shot in Dubai. The video is Keche's first project under their new record label, Golden Empire Legacy. The duo have been sharing the inspiration behind the song. In April, 
April, the Tama based duo inked a juicy deal with new record label Golden Empire Legacy to help rejuvenate their career and uplift their brand. Per the two year deal, the diabetes hit makers are expected to produce classics to excite Ghanaian music enthusiasts and help engineer a breakthrough across the continent. The love classic Odo comes with all the exciting lyrics to keep one's love life intact. Before I meet my woman, something happened. I put off the song and said, so I'm happy that um, people are loving it and um, the video is for real. Yeah, I'm just imagining. The video was shot at the Palm Jumeirah in Dubai, one of the most expensive locations at the United Arab Emirates. We have to go all the way really to Dubai to show this video. That's how powerful the song and how strong we want to be. We were so much ready and lots did that we won't bring out. The mass talked about love song and video is tipped to help the award-winning Afrobeat group break new grounds and ultimately get them the much-needed presence in Ghana and across the continent. So there you have it, uh, Keche actually giving us that brand new video of the Golden Empire Legacy record. Let's see how they fare in the game once again. Now moving on to the next story. Outgoing musical president Baiso Sekufor, popularly known as Obo, believes the music industry can survive without Shatawali and Stoneboy. According to him, the Ghana music industry has seen better musicians in the past than the two dancehall artists. The music industry can do without Shatawali and Stoneboy because they are not the only musicians in Ghana. There have been musicians before these two dancehall uh, artists who achieved more than them. Obo told the Daily Graphic. Now, Shatawali was banned for three years from the VGMA, but the award still went on, and his ban did not affect the music industry in any way. The fact is, the music industry is bigger than just these two individuals. The two dancehall artists have been in the news following their roles in the strife during the 2019 Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. So Obo there speaking his mind on the matter, Stoneboy and Shatterwell, and that's about it for entertainment news tonight here on News 360. There is more on 3news.com. When you go there, you can surf and browse for more. Don't forget, this Sunday, Talented Kids Season 10 finale at the National Theatre. Make sure you are there. My name is Nana Quadrado. I'm black and proud. Yeah, on behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you, as always, for staying with us. My name is Alfred Okanse, and I am black and proud. I'm Natalie Fort. I'm black and proud. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great evening.